So, hello everybody again to Amsterdam. My name is Pascal Smit, and um, yeah, actually I'm working in Munich as the chief marketing officer for Travian Games. Um, what could you expect out of this keynote? Um, I have to lower my voice. Sorry. Um, you will get some inspiration, hopefully. Um, you will not get all final answers, and um, I think you will have at least some starting points and tools to go further. Okay, nice guy, a uh, big one. The saying is that Mr. Miyamoto, the creative mastermind behind Nintendo, who is doing all the funny stuff with Mario and so on, the saying is that he watched a sumo wrestler, and the sumo wrestler was so heavy that he has to uh, use two scales to wage himself, and he has to keep the balance to not fall up, um, down off the, off the scale. And this look um, really fun, and Mr. Miyamoto, he uh, thought about this could be a part of a game. He don't think in the first time that it could be the start to do a balance game and do some healthy stuff. So, but he invented the balance board and he started to, to build Wii Fit. And he sold, I think um, they're already above this number, but worldwide he sold, uh, Nintendo sold uh, 33 million scales. Yeah, formerly known as, as Wii Fit, as the balance board. But, but what is the world about around us? So we, we're facing a lot of changes. So um, yeah, the Sandy Storm um, is one part of the um, global change in, in, in weather, the global warming stuff. We are in the middle of an energy crisis or energy change. It belongs to which country you are actually in and which party you listen to. Um, our planet is overcrowding, the population is exploding, and we're living in a complete connected world. So everyone shares everything with, with, with um, not only sending packages through Amazon, but also through Facebook and, and all this stuff. And there's a huge step forward in, in case of uh, medicine. So stem cells uh, are appearing to be some starting point for some future stuff, funny stuff which we are uh, in former times we only read in books. And we are in times of a fast involving technology. And I don't know if you ever saw this, this is uh, from Gartner.com, the institute or the company, they offer a simple model um, of innovation. So most of the things um, start very low as an idea and comes up to a level where they're relevant, not only to people, but also to a market. Then somehow um, the excitement or maybe the, the excitement uh, fades away or the competition raises up too much. So the market shrinks or the people are not interested anymore. And after that, after a short while, if, if the, uh, the core of the idea of the product, of the technology is still valuable, we will go to normal business and it raises again and you have a settled industry. The digital business is very fast and the cycles are moving faster and faster. And you see a lot of um, topics which are placed on this um, hyper cycle, um, uh, which um, as an example, there's gamification. Uh, see it, it's shortly above the plateau. And below you see home health monitoring. It's already dropped to this uh, field of disillusionment. What is the one of, one of the main direction of serious games or one part of the serious games or, or applied games, as I heard? Um, what is, what is the surrounding? So you have everywhere these expensive research for medicine or for medical devices. Um, a lot of patents running out and this is a double problem. Uh, you have to spend more money to develop something interesting. On the other hand, the sources of your money fades away. All over the world you have a lot of pressure on the healthcare system. And um, yeah, so there's also no, 
So um, country is taking over, no um, government who's saying, okay, we take over, no problem, you don't earn money, we, we will pay it. So that is, that's the total picture, that's the situation, but where could we start? So it's about marketing mix, and I'm a marketing guy. You have seen uh, for sure such uh, fields, maybe um, not. Well, we talk about product design, communication, the business model, and distribution. Because I'm a marketing guy, I talk about the target group. So, of course, you should start to think about what is your target group. And you should start to think about the mindset. What is really inside of your target group? Because only by age or um, gender, you can't judge a person or even touch them. And um, you have to think about the circumstances. What, is, what kind of market, what kind of people living in which circumstances? And of course, you have to remember what are their interests. But having uh, said so, um, these questions are more or less easy. You can sit down, you can think about it, you can do some research, you come out with a result. But we should think more about the barriers, and the barriers could be very huge. So you have a product, and uh, one question to you all. Who of you have already in a build or a create um, a serious game. Could you raise the hand? So a lot of you have made a serious game and maybe you face the fact that the people who should use it, if they have to pay money for it, or even if the customers have to pay a device to offer the, the consumers, they don't have, they can't afford it. They have no time to use your product. Uh, and maybe they don't ill at all. So you build uh, products in the health area, maybe for ill persons. What do you do if, say, if the market for such Ill, Ill persons is such small that you don't get your money out of it? And, of course, they have eaten too many marketing lies. What is the difference between your product and maybe on, on TV shows selling some healthy stuff which is doing wonderful things to people? I don't know. You, you know this TV uh, shows uh, selling, the shopping channel is full of it. And the, the greatest barrier is they don't care. They see your product and they don't care. So um, what could we do about this again? How could we handle these barriers? Um, motivation is the absence of demotivation. And if the cat away, the mice do their play. And therefore, we can think about some solutions. So first idea is indirect approach. If you ask an elderly people, or it shouldn't be very old, but if you ask him to use a product because it's good for his or her health, then maybe the people start to, to tell you, no, I have no time, I don't care, um, all the stuff we talked before. But if you tell them if they are able to stay longer and have more quality time, more, f more fun, more uh, movement with their grandchilds. That's a great motivator. That's a really other angle to, to watch on this. And you can also um, find some examples in the real world. This is a campaign trying to move people to doing um, the precautions uh, against cancer. And this is Vladimir Klitschko and his wife. Is it Vladimir? I hope so. No, Vitaly. Vitaly? Okay, sorry, Vitaly. Um, um, uh, they, ask, they ask the partners, um, if you love your partner, please send him over to the pre precautions against cancer. And I think you know that it could be a big motivator that you are doing something, not for you, but for your partner. Other thing, and uh, Martin uh, already mentioned a lot of uh, good ideas and inspiration. I don't want to dig too much into it. But gamification, what does it mean? It means that you, you choose some, some fun out of, out of games, uh, trying to motivate people to, to stay in your product. It's definitely very important to put fun into the product. So I, I've done some research. I, I think there are obviously... Um, a lot of stuff are in the internet, and maybe you know it. That's the bottle bank arcade. You're putting bottles inside, and the game started. This is the deepest trash can. So you put trash in it. It's the sign, the deepest trash can. And then it starts to... 
uh, the very fun to put your waste into the trash can. And that is the, um, the traffic control lottery. You're driving the right way into the, in, in, in the limits, then you're maybe happy to win a prize. And uh, that's a small prototype of, I think, some students. Um, they thought, okay, if people are waiting on the traffic light, uh, why shouldn't they play some Pong? So they installed some Pong. I think a pretty clever device, which you can add a lot of stuff on it. And if you ever tried to ask uh, kids, uh, let's do a walk. Huh? It's such a nice weather. Uh, let's go outside. Um, say, no, no, I, I have to play video games. Uh, I, I, I want to, to I do other stuff. But if you start to ask them, okay, we're going for an adventure, we are going to start geocaching, then, of course, it's a lot of fun. And on top, you communicate between the generations. It's not only fun for the kids. This builds a bridge to a part which you saw on the um, Gartner's hype cycle very low. So that's um, home automation. So you have sensors. Uh, you could go to your bathroom and you know everything about yourself. Um, and it's very important to be part of the daily routine of the people to, to add something uh, to their life. But I don't mean this because that it's not daily routine. That is something which someone tries to add to your daily routine. The real daily routine is daily routine. So start your engine. You go into your car, you press the button. A perfect way to give some information or start some action for the people. Or um, there's already some stuff who exist. That is a pretty good platform. I wonder why nobody built um, uh, a piece of software for this uh, very uh, widespread platform. Very interesting. People brush their teeth, part of the daily routine. Yes, that that that's, uh, reminds you, um, if you're using it, uh, about birth control. Funny enough, um, the service uh, on, on, on that is for free, but um, it's not, not connected online, but you can register. And it reminds you if you have to change your, um, your uh, treatment for birth control. And that was a very interesting idea. Uh, I, have, I don't know if you ever read about Memoto. Um, I uh, discovered it in an article. It's um, a crowdfunding project, so it's, there are only prototypes. They're doing photos. You clip this camera on your shirt, and it takes photos all the time. And if you have problems by remembering certain things, and um, also the parts you can maybe treat on, on dementia, I know there's a very small possibilities to do so with this kind of stuff, but um, it's not only the serious parts that you get all the pictures of the day, and in the end of the day, you watch again what do you have um, discovered um, uh, the day and remember again on it and, 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 and help you to remember. It's also a great stuff um, which you could uh, give to other people which are not ill or not have no problems to, to remember at all. There are very successful commercial products Nike, Nike was able to um, establish a service. Before, they only sell image, brands, products, running shoes, big sponsors of big sports events on the hunt for the best sportsmen. But um, this is a huge step, and uh, yeah, it's part of the daily routine, at least some days a week. Adidas uh, also does uh, this stuff. And there is um, a tiny little device called Fitbit where you can collect a lot of um, different signals um, and it, it follows you through your daily walk, life, sleep, and so on. What's next? Word of mouth. Um, everyone um, uh, is uh, talking about word of mouth and say, okay, marketing is dead. You have to convince your consumers directly. You have to find a way that they talk about. So what is the definition of word of mouth? First of all, one example. If you have a good restaurant, of course you will tell others there's a great restaurant, excellent meal, you should go over a reasonable price and so on. So um, you have 
something and you have a common interest with your, uh, the, the, the person you're talking to, good food for a reasonable price, there's something new, you can tell them a new restaurant, there's something the other person didn't know, and um, yeah, then um, if, if this exchange started and it's relevant also for others, the word of mouth will be started. And it's important that you not uh, mix up tools with word of mouth. If you don't have the word of mouth message in your product, um, it's not helpful to have a Facebook um, account or something like that. You need um, the wow effect in your product. One example from my, my work before, um, maybe you know all this uh, Dr. Kawashima. He really exists, and as far as I know, he don't like this picture of him, this virtual picture, very much. This guy, um, he approached, uh, he, he, he lives in Japan, and uh, he told everybody, video games are bad for you. You get dump, and so on. And Nintendo approached him and asked him, okay, how could we make a game uh, which is good for the people? And he comes out with the concept, brain training. And um, he doing this uh, brain training uh, for a while, and uh, um, the, the product exists, and we do marketing to kids and to adults, two different uh, target groups. Um, they have a common interest in games, different level of, um, different level of uh, information, and uh, there was one wow effect, one, one message inside of the product. It was, well, um, how old is your brain? They were a little test, and we, uh, we, we uh, find out what is the brain age. And the kids go over to the parents and ask them, look, I am old like this, how old is your brain? And this little message start to, to the word of mouth um, um, effect and was very valuable for the campaign itself. Now I want to talk about the business model. This um, is uh, from uh, Muzu. I can also recommend this institute, this company. Pretty, pretty good guys. And um, that are two games. One is Infinity Blade. You can buy it, so you, you buy it, uh, just pay, um, get the product and play. And um, the blue line uh, uh, is, is Infinity Blade. The red line is Kingdoms of Camelot. It's for free. It's a so-called free-to-play game. And the free-to-play game um, asks you later on, if you're in the game, to pay some money if you get an advantage. And if you compare the revenues of both games. So um, you already see here, if you lower the barrier to enter, it's free. You have, you have this hockey stick um, effect. And if you um, go into the, uh, the revenues, you see that they earn more and more money out of a free-to-play game because the people are able to buy inside of the game. Of course, it's in balance. Martin mentioned it before. You can't um, ask people uh, to spend money um, without having fun. They always need fun, and you have to, all to think about this long term. But as it's an example how the, the games industry was able to flex their business model. So what could we do? Marketing is a disaster. Where should we start? Which channel? What is important? Uh, I don't know. Always when I see this map, I, I think, okay, do I really uh, want to continue working for marketing? But... Um, the most important thing is where's your customer? And the question is, if you develop a product, um, on which platform should I go? So is it mobile? Which mobile is this tablet? Which, which system? Where should I start to develop for future platforms like the Google classes or, or what is about smart TV? Could I use a new video? Aren't Wii U games uh, a console stat? Or is there a chance for Wii U? Is, is, is there um, a good opportunity in using Steam as a distribution platform? Again, the hype cycle. Serious again. Try to find out where is your product in this hype cycle, on which platform. And then find out when it's the right time to spend money. It could be that in the ramping up phase, it's essential that you spend a lot of marketing money into the right channels, but later on, maybe it doesn't make sense and you have to try to make your product the best you could to overcome this chasm of disillusionment 
and go over to the plateau of productivity to, uh, in your product. So be careful with that. Conclusion, it's okay to earn money. You should, you deserve it. And um, try also to reach the healthy people. Don't go only for a small target group. Of course, design your product exactly that you could reach them, help them do something. But um, also integrate fun. So there's the bridge to the last keynote and uh, put some word of mouth message inside. Find out, ask yourself not only what is the key message, but also how could your key message be part of a word of, word of mouth effect. And uh, try to be part of the daily routine or at least try to, to give some service because you have a constant, constant contact to your consumers. And um, flex your business model. This is only one. Find out what's the best business model because it's important to earn money and you know to earn money is okay. And uh, follow consumers to the relevant platform. There is no standard answer. If I tell you, yeah, or you should go tablet, maybe, okay. What's, what's next year or uh, how, how long do you need to come over to this platform? Therefore, do invest marketing, uh, marketing invest in time and don't use your muscles if you don't have the bones. So go through all the other points and find out what's the solution and then go for big marketing money. And don't tell any marketing lies. I know it, I'm from the marketing and thank you very much.